Um, so I'm Eric. I'll be talking about STOP. Uh, this is a paper that I originally did as part of an internship at uh, Microsoft uh, roughly, uh, yeah, roughly a year and a half ago. Uh, the, yeah, so the paper is called Self-Taught Optimizer, Recursively Self-Improving Code Generation. Uh, so one thing to observe initially is that there's a large number of papers, uh, even, you know, even at this time, that had proposed ways of scaffolding language models. Essentially, systems around the language models that, when combined with them, allow them to perform better, solve harder tasks, solve harder you know, coding problems, solve harder math problems. Uh, and uh, you know, I have a few examples of them on here. Uh, but yeah, so you can generally refer to these kind of things as different scaffolds. So it's well known at this point uh, that language models are able to improve code for a given task. So what that means is you pass to the language model some program uh, and you know in general you can ask it to improve the to improve the program. You can give it some utility function that uh, you can use to evaluate whether or not improve the program. And one, you know, for example, very naive way to do this is to simply ask the language model uh, improve the program, you know, n times and return the best one according to some utility function. Uh, and one thing to observe, however, is that the improver scaffold itself is, uh, is code. So it is a program. So the key idea behind this paper is just that you can take a scaffold that improves code, uh, and you can take this general, uh, this general approach of asking a scaffold to improve code, and you can actually pass that scaffold to the code improving scaffold itself. So you can simply take, uh, so you can simply take the scaffold and ask the language model return an improved version of the improver. And what this means, and, and then you ask, okay, you have this utility function though, how do you define the utility for an improver? What you can actually do is you can define the utility of an improver according to how well it, impro how well it improves the utility of other downstream tasks. Um, so given a seed improver, you can pass that improver to itself, uh, ask it to improve programs on some collection of downstream tasks, and see which of the improved improvers helped. Uh, and then you can take the improved improver, and you can improve that improved improver <laughs> with the improved improver repeatedly. So as a result, you have you, you can basically get uh, arbit you can take improvers that improve improvers and improve the improved improvers with improved improvers, and <laughs> yeah. So um, <laughs> it yeah. So it turns out uh, this this uh, the improved improvers are uh, the mo uh, if you pass this to GPT four. It comes up with some pretty fun strategies for uh, improving programs. Um, this is essentially just by asking it to improve, um, yeah, improve arbitrary code. So it proposes uh, using genetic algorithms. It proposes to decompose the program and improve it part by part. It, one of my favorite approaches, it proposes to uh, basically try different strategies multiple times uh, because there's like uncertainty in the uh, in the meta utility calculation, uh, and you can use you can basically it basically proposes to do like an upper confidence bound search on different improvers improvement strategies. Um, yeah, th there's a, basically a bunch of examples that um, the model proposes for improvement scaffold. In one interesting thing is that some of these were actually late, like basically published after the cutoff date 
of the model. Um, so basically very similar strategies had been applied to later work, uh, to two works uh, that were themselves published that the model didn't have access to. Um, and yeah, so the approach is really fun, but it's, we are very clear in the paper to refer to this as recursively self-improving code generation as opposed to just recursive self-improvement. So there's a few important uh, points that you know, bear being made. Uh, first, the model doesn't actually, like, in any sense, improve itself in this, in this paper. Um, instead, you're literally just optimizing uh, the scaffolding uh, to improve, that is used to improve code to improve code better. Um, it's much less general. Uh, it's, uh, but it allows us to potentially test strategies for mitigating harm uh, from uh, the ways that language models improve themselves. Uh, or, sorry, from, yeah, from the recursive self-improvement strategies that might be adopted by models. And, yeah, so what we observed, we, we took this uh, well-known difficult, uh, sorry, less well-known but difficult uh, downstream task of learning parity with noise, and we basically took a simple improver uh, scaffold and applied it to itself on this task. And we observed that while GPT-4 was able to, each improved improver was better at improving solution, at improving a naive solution to this uh, learning parity with noise problem, each successive improver was actually better at improving um, the solutions to this task. Um, we also took the improved improver on this task and we showed that on a bunch of other tasks it's also better able to improve code uh, so that inc included some competition uh, problems. That included some hard, uh, yeah, some some difficult uh, other problems. Uh, and we have an example of a uh, both our seed improver as well as an improver that has improved itself uh, several times. And yeah, uh, we also studied some uh, potentially undesirable behaviors. So we were curious if you gave it, you know, if you made it very easy for it to simply disable a flag for like a sandbox, would it you know, generate outputs that disable a sandbox flag? And what we observed is that yes, it would basically, um, like on, in a small um, proportion of instances, it would um, just you know, set sandbox to false and it would often generate a reason like this is for efficiency or uh, something like that. Um, yeah, and so that was like one in, roughly 200 attempts, and GPT-4 did not appear to, uh, it, it, yeah, did, did not appear to do this less than GPT-3.5. In fact, um, although the, the error bars are like overlapping, uh, the average unsandboxing rate of GPT-4 uh, was higher than GPT-3.5, and if, if you gave it a warning not to remove it, it was actually marginally more likely uh, to remove it. So yeah, um, this was uh, made, yeah, the, I, I'm really thankful to my advisors at uh, MSR New England. Uh, I guess Adam Kalai is now at OpenAI. Uh, Lester's, um, yeah, uh, Le Lester is at MSR. And yeah, it was a really fun project. And thank you. <laughs>